we are ready to go. This, this class right now is going to be a rise and shine yoga. So it's going to be about 45 minutes. We're going to start off very slow, get a good stretch in to start. Then we're going to move through a little bit of a faster vinyasa flow through the middle part of the workout. And then we're going to um, incorporate some long, slower, steady stretching at the end. So right now, all I want you to do is come down flat onto your back. Take your time getting there. Take your time getting ready. You can hug your knees up to your chest or you can start off in a corpse pose. Wherever you want to be for the next minute to 90 seconds, you want to take this time to focus your breathing, to bring your attention to where you're at right now and focus the next 45 minutes on something beneficial to your body, beneficial to your mind, but finding a comfort pose right now. I'm laying down flat on your back. I want you to continue to hug your knees up to your chest, but just hug your left knee up to the chest. Let your right leg fall down flat to the mat and find some stillness in this position here. And we want to get that same equal and opposite stretch on the other side now, pulling that other knee up. Letting that opposite leg fall down straight to the ground. And come back down to that corpse pose. Let those legs fall down. Flat to the mat. Here we go. A couple of pelvic tilts here. So as I inhale, I want to let my belly rise up off the ground, find some space between my lower back and the mat. And then as I exhale, I want to try to push my lower back right down into that mat. So the, the pelvic tilts up as the lower back pushes down to the ground. And then as I inhale, that space comes back between my lower back and the ground. According to your own breathing here, we start off nice and slow. Through each position that we come through, we're going to be about three to five breaths. And with this one here, it's all the focus on the breathing. We're gonna hug those knees up to the chest one more time, bringing both knees up to the chest, bringing those knees a little bit wider this time, almost into that happy baby position, but we're not grabbing those feet just yet. The knees are wide here. Inhale, exhale, we stay here, trying to keep that tailbone down towards the ground, so the entirety of the back from that tailbone right through the spine, up towards the top of the back and the head, it's all the knees right down into that back. We continue holding that right knee. We let that left leg fall down to the ground. And then we come into a little bit of a spinal twist here. I take my left hand, I grab the outside of my right knee, and I pull that knee lightly across the body. As I let that right arm open up, and I look towards my right arm, so I really feel that stretch through the pec, through the shoulders, as that knee comes across the body. And I feel that stretch almost through that IT bin on this right side from that hip connection right down to that the side of that knee. Come back through central. Pull that left knee up. Let that right leg fall down straight first. Then we take the right hand. We grab the outside of that left knee. We bring that left knee across the body nice and easy at first. And then I let that left arm peel open. And I look towards that left hand. We find some stillness in here now. We're not going to be able to fix any imperfections in the body in this one class alone. 
but all we do is take note of it and we look to improve on it. We look to find ways to improve on any of those imperfections as we can. So any of these stretches that work for you, document it, put it into your routine that you do daily or semi-daily. And anything that doesn't work for you, take it through this class, take it through this practice, and then leave it behind if you need to. Back through to the center here. Use the weight of the legs to almost massage that back into the ground. So you can go side to side just slightly, and then almost top to bottom just lightly, but the weight of the legs is massaging that back, that lower back, into that mat here. Letting those feet come down flat. We're going to come through just a couple of double leg bridges. My feet are flat. My knees are bent at about 90 degrees. I'm going to turn my palms so my palms are facing up towards the sky. Now all I'm going to do is try to bridge my hips up, hold it for an exhale, and then on my inhale, I let the butt come down towards the ground. Lightly touch the ground, and that starts the exhale once again. Long, slow, steady exhale. Quicker inhale as we come down, we come right back up on that exhale. This is a strengthening movement for the for the glutes and the hamstrings, but it's also a range of motion movement, especially if you focus on trying to get those hips up a little bit higher with each bridge that you come through. Go down and relax, straighten out that right leg, keep that left knee bent with that foot flat, and then just go into a hamstring swing here, nice and easy. This is straight range of motion movement where we just look to wake up that hamstring. If it's feeling really tight at first, maybe you need to shorten it up a little bit. But again, it is that range of motion movement where we look to get a little bit higher with each rep that we come through. We're just waking that hamstring up on this right side. And then we will do the same on that left side. We can switch now. Nice and easy at first. Couple of reps at this, this depth here. And then we start to come up just a little bit higher each time that we come through. Rise and shine yoga. So the rise part of it, we take our time getting going. Nothing too strenuous. We get a good stretch for the lower body. We'll get a good stretch for the upper body as well. And then that shine portion will come back to us as we start to flow through. Hugging those knees up to the chest again. Wherever you feel the best stretch, so if those knees are a little bit closer together, that's fine. If those knees want to come back to that wider, almost happy baby position, feel free there. But then just start to roll forward and backwards now, using again the weight of the legs to massage that back when you're down until you're able to roll all the way up to a standing position. From here, we're going to come right down onto our hands and our knees. And then we're going to push back to a child's pose for the first time. So in this child's pose, my big toes are together. My knees are nice and wide. My palms are flat down to the ground. And then I bring my chest down towards the mat. And then I let the crown of my head come down and find that stillness in this child's pose the first time. Again, this first time through it, we bring our focus in our attention to what we want to accomplish in this workout, 45 minutes of focus on our breathing, on our body, on our mind. The first time we come through any position, we might feel tightness. For me, it's in my hips right now in this child's pose. But the beauty of this yoga practice is the more that you come through a given position, the better off you'll feel. Inhale, exhale. Let's flow forward through just a baby up dog. I let those hips drop down to the mat. But my knees are down on the mat here. I want this to be nice and comfortable, so not too strenuous on the upper body here. I want to turn my elbows towards the rib cage, and I want to press up off the ground so that my chest is up, lifting up straight from my hips right through my shoulders. But I feel that stretch, that opening through my hips, my tight hips, like I said. That's what I'm feeling today. Wherever you're feeling, just give that attention to it. Let's come right back to that child's pose once again, big toes together and back. And right away, already, that second time I come through it, I get a little bit of an easier transition into that deep child's pose. I'm going to keep my left hand right where it is, but I'm going to travel my right hand over 
so that it sandwiches right on top of the left. And in doing that, I get a little bit more of a stretch to the back side of my right body here, that right lat, that right shoulder, getting some attention here, but all the way down through that hip as well because I'm really reaching across this mat and almost scraping the top of my left hand here. Bring that right hand back to the right side of the mat, and we get that same equal and opposite stretch as I travel my left hand over to land on top of my right, and I almost scrape across to feel that stretch through that left shoulder, the back of that left side body. Come back to that neutral child pose. And let's flow forward through that baby up dog once again. And once again, that second time I come through it, those hips are talking to me a little bit more, but it was easier for me to come through it and get those hips down towards the mat. But really still focusing on getting my upper body up off the mat to get that stretch to the front side of the body now. First time through it, we just got that stillness right through this straight upward facing dog. Now I want to look over my left shoulder. Let my right hip lengthen a little bit, keeping the integrity of my arms. Inhale, exhale, other side, same thing. I look over my right shoulder, I feel that stretch through my left hip. Let's come to a neutral tabletop position right now for a couple of cat cows. So my hands are right under my shoulders, my knees are right under my hips. As I inhale, I want to drop my pelvis and look forward. As I exhale, I want to round that back and look back down between my legs almost. Inhale, I look forward. Exhale, round that back. Inhale, drop that pelvis. So we get a little bit of a stretch through the hips especially, but also through those shoulders and that back. The more that you exaggerate this movement, the more stretch that you'll get out of it. You are according to your own breathing. If it feels good for you to come up onto the fingers at any point of it, feel free. Good. Back to that neutral tabletop position. We're going to give those shoulders, those pecs, a little bit of an opening to get started here. I'm going to turn my right hand in so that it's facing in towards my left wrist. I'm going to follow my thumb, that right thumb, with my eyes as I peel that right side of the body open and then come right back down. This, once again, is going to be a range of motion movement where I focus on just coming up until my body tells me that that is good, and then I come right back down. But each time that I come up, that range of motion might open up a little bit more for me. If it doesn't, so be it. Just stay where your body's telling you to stay. But the reason why I'm following that top thumb with my eyes is to get a little bit of a stretch through my upper back. Good, let's switch side and do the same thing on that other side. We're looking for anywhere right around 10 to 12 reps. Those first couple are nice and easy. And you're according to your own breathing. Let's inhale on the way down, exhale on the way up. If you want to exaggerate that a little bit more and let that hand Come down a little bit more, almost under that arm at the bottom, you can. And then up a little bit higher at the top. Whatever you need to do, but you are following that down with those eyes. Good, back to that neutral tabletop. Now we want to give the legs, the hips a little bit of attention. We're going to come into a fire hydrant on the left side. So I'm going to bring my left knee straight up and out and then come right back down. I'm not going to hold it up at the top for any time at all. This is, again, just going to be a range of motion movement where I come up until my body tells me that that is high enough. And then I come back down. I look to get about 8 to 10 reps in on this left side. Switching sides, same thing, nice and easy on that right side now, keeping the integrity, the core is engaged, the back is flat, that knee just comes up and out. I have a little bit of bend in my elbows, my elbows are turned so they're right under my shoulders. Good, 
I'm gonna go back to that left side, but instead of that hydrant up and out to the up to the outside, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my knee forward so that it breaks the plane of my forearms. And then I'm gonna keep that knee bent, but I'm gonna come across and try to open up, tail open that top hip there. And again, it's a range of motion movement. I'm not holding it at the top, but I'm going a little bit slower than I did with those hydrants. It is range of motion, so by that I mean I'm trying to open it up a little bit more each time that I come up. That knee is staying just about bent at 90 degrees, and in doing that, I'm able to feel that left hip really open as that heel comes across and behind. If I look over my right shoulder, I should be able to see the bottom of that left foot come across the body. Good, let's switch sides, get that same movement going on the other side. That knee comes forward to break the plane of the forearms, then it comes across and behind. First couple are nice and easy. You'll probably feel that glute, that hamstring engage as well to start that movement or even to finish that movement as that heel comes across. But more importantly, it's that hip opening up that will lead later in this workout as we start to move through some warrior one, warrior two positions throughout our yoga flow. When we get there, we're all we're worried about is right now. Good. Let's land back down into that nice, easy child's pose because I want that child's pose to be a welcoming and comforting position for you throughout the workout. Whatever you need to land down into it, you can. But more often, what I was saying earlier, the first child pose that I came down to, my hips were a little bit tight. It didn't even feel that comforting. But the more I came through it, now this is a comforting, comfortable position to me. I hope it is for you too. Inhale, exhale, slow forward to that baby up dog once again. And again, I'm feeling that a little bit differently than those first couple that we came through. Let's come right back to that flat back tabletop position, hands right under the shoulders, knees right under the hips. So we woke up the shoulders a little bit, we woke up the legs, the hips a little bit, so now I'm going to get some core activation using both of those movements. So I'm going to lift my left hand straight up in front of my left shoulder, I'm going to kick my right leg straight back out from that right glute. So basically, it's as long as my body can be from my left fingertips right down through my left forearm, elbow, arm, right through that shoulder and across the back, through the glute, through that hamstring, to point your toes in the back. Point those toes so that you're as long as that body can be, as long as your body can be right now. But that core is engaged to find some stillness here. Down and switch sides. I bring that right hand up as that left leg comes out, and we find that stillness on the other side. Drop that right side, push back to a child pose just for one breath. Inhale, exhale, we stay here. Inhale, exhale, we flow forward, baby up dog. Inhale, exhale, we stay here. Inhale, exhale, we are to that flat back. One more time, we go to that left side. So that left arm comes forward, that right leg goes out. We find that stillness first, but then we look for a little bit of movement, we look for a little bit of range of motion by crunching this elbow towards the knee and then extending it right back out. That's going to be my exhale. My inhale is as I crunch that knee to the elbow. My exhale is as I extend back up. Inhale in, crunch, exhale out. That core is engaged and get that core woken up. And if you're able to get that knee down to the inside, bring that knee up to the inside of that forearm or that elbow down to the inside of that knee, that just gets you a little bit more contracted at the bottom. But then think about that, even as you come up to the three, it's a little bit taller and higher and longer at the top. Good, switch sides. That right hand comes out, that left leg goes out. Hold it. And then we inhale, we crunch that knee to the elbow, we exhale, we come up to that long body stretch. Thank you. 
Good. Let's land into that child pose, that welcoming child pose as you need it. You sink deep into it. You bring that focus back to the breathing. We're going to start to flow a little bit more now. We've got a good, slow and steady start with some core focus, a little bit of strength focus. But like I said, now we start to flow from that child pose. Flow forward to that baby up dog. Let those hips drop down into that mat. It's our last baby up dog of this flow. The next time we come to this, I need to be off the mat. And I'll explain that as we come through it slowly the first couple of times. For the first time of the day, we're going to push back to that downward facing dog. So I'm on the balls of my feet and back, on my hands in front. I have a little bit of bend in my elbows. I have a little bit of bend in my knees. But I find stillness in this down dog for the first time here. My head is just relaxed down towards the mat, almost between my biceps. If I look over my left, I can see under my left tricep. If I look over my right, I can see under my right tricep. We find that stillness in this down dog, and then we start to walk that dog in place. I bend my right knee as that left leg extends straight, and vice versa, back and forth we go, exaggerating that movement if you need to, feeling that stretch through that calf and Achilles. And now instead of walking that dog in place, start to inch those feet up towards the hands, taking very small steps until you are able to stand and land into a ragdoll position. I'm in a folded forward position. For this ragdoll position this first time, I'm going to relax all the tension through my head, neck, and shoulders. I'm going to crisscross my arms so my fingertips are on the opposite elbows, and I'm going to completely relax the upper body. Just hinge at the hips, and the more I release all that tension from the upper body, the more of a stretch I'm getting through the hamstrings, through the whole back side of that lower body, but also in releasing that tension, I'm getting a stretch through my upper back as well. Let those arms hang down, almost sweep the shoelaces, sweep the toes, back and forth, you can go a little bit. This folded forward position, let's come halfway up to that flat back, hands right onto the shins. Neutral neck now, I'm looking down about a foot in front of my feet. Inhale, exhale, fold back down forward before coming all the way up and right into a baby back bend at the top. So my palms are facing forward, my shoulders roll down my back. Inhale, exhale, root to reach, palms facing each other, come straight down the mat, sweep the feet, sweep the mat, come to that flat back. From here, I'm going to step back to a high plank for the first time, and we hold that high plank. We let the heat build through the core, through the chest, through the shoulders. We tighten up the stomach to take the pressure off the shoulders. That neck is neutral, it's not scrunched up, you're not looking forward. You're looking down to take the tension out of the back of the neck. We really hold this high plank. Tough transition from this high plank. I'm going to inch forward just slightly, then start to inch down towards the ground before coming over onto the tops of my feet and up through that upward facing dog. Knees off the mat this time through, but looking forward, looking up. Inhale, exhale, push back to that downward facing dog. Stillness first. Walk that dog in place for a couple of reps on each side. And then start to inch those feet up. Only about four to six steps, making your way back up to standing. That is going to be our flow for the next five to six times coming through it. So we start in this flat back. Hands on the shins. We fold forward before coming all the way up, and we land into that baby back bend at the top. Inhale, exhale, we root to reach, and then we sweep those feet at the bottom, flat back. Step back to that high plank, inch forward and then down to that low plank, upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Start to walk that dog in place and start to walk that dog up to standing. Only about four steps flat back. 
pull forward before coming all the way up and open at the top. A little bit faster now. We sweep those feet flat back. You could step or jump the feet back to a high plank. Inch forward and then down, hovering right up through that upward facing dog. Back to that downward facing dog. Bend the knees generously and try jumping the feet up to the hands. Flat back. Fold forward, all the way up and open. Now, if jumping up and down is too much for you, you can always step up when we jump up or step back when we jump back. Inhale. Exhale, root to reach. Sweep those feet flat back. Jump back to that high plank. Inch forward and down. Shut around the high upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Bend those knees. Jump those feet up to the hands. Flat back. Full forward. All the way up. Two more times through it. Let's go. Sweep those feet flat back. Jump back. High to low. Upward to downward facing dog. Bend those knees. Jump those feet up. Flat back. Fold forward. All the way up. And open. One more time. We sweep. We jump back. Right into that chaturanga. High to low. Upward. To downward facing dog. Bend those knees. Jump those feet up to the hands. Flat back. Fold forward. Come all the way up. This time we bring the hands to heart center. We shake those legs out. We roll those shoulders out. We continue to flow through this movement here. Relax the arms. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, sweep those feet. Flat back. Step or jump back to that high plank. Inch forward and then down to that low plank. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. We raise our left leg up straight. Toes pointing down towards the ground. Hold that three-legged dog. We drop that left leg, we raise that right leg up. Toes pointing down towards the ground. Really activate that high top glute, that high top hamstring. Drop that right knee, bend both knees almost into a bare plank with those flat back knees bent, and then try to jump those feet up to the hands from there. Flat back, fold forward, all the way up, and open at the top. Inhale, exhale, root to reach, sweep those feet, flat back, shut around the high to low, upward to downward facing dog, stick that down dog. Raise that left foot up, toes pointing down. Peel that top leg, left leg open. Drop that left foot. Raise that right leg up. Peel that top right leg open. Stack the hips there. Drop that right foot. Bend the knees. Jump the feet up to the hands. Flat back. Fold forward, all the way up, baby back bend. Chaturanga, flat back, high to low, upward to downward facing dog. Raise that left foot up, open it right up. Try to crunch that left knee to the left same side elbow and hold it. Up to that three-legged open dog. Knee between the forearms, crunch it, hold it. Up and open. Knee under and across towards that opposite forearm and hold it. Downward facing dog, raise that right leg up. Open it up. Crunch that right knee to that same side, right elbow. Up to that three-legged dog. Knee between the forearms towards the nose. Up to that three-legged dog. Under and across towards that opposite forearm. Downward facing dog. Bend the knees. Jump the feet up to the hands. Flat back. Fold forward. All the way up. And open. Hang on. Exhale. Low forward. Flat back. Chaturanga. 
high to low, upward. To downward facing dog, raise that left leg up, peel it open. Step that left foot to the left hand for warrior one on this left side. My back right leg is just about straight. My back right foot is flat down on the ground. And at a 45 degree angle, my arms are straight up and down. My front left knee is right over that front angle. Sink down just a little bit deeper. Hands come down, we come right back up and stay on this left side and peel that left foot open in that three-legged dog. Step that left foot right back forward into that warrior one on this side once again. Notice the second time we step into it, it was easier to get that foot forward. It's going to get easier on that third time through. Peel it open at the top. Step it right back up. Left side, warrior one. Again, staying on that left side, it comes up and open at the top, and then it steps back to that left hand. One more time here. Up and open, step it forward. Five times on that left side. We come down to that downward facing dog. You can walk that dog in place for a breath or two. Then we raise that right leg up. Peel it open. Step that right foot to the right hand for warrior one on the other side. The first time we come through it, our arms are straight. And we hold it that first time a little bit longer. Those hands come down, up to that three-legged pale open dog. That foot steps forward to that right hand again. Warrior one, second time through it on this right side. Back down, up to that wide open three-legged dog. Step it forward. Stick it. Down and up and open. Step it forward. That's four. Last one. Up and open. Step it forward. Bring those hands down. Push back to that down dog. Bend the knees, jump the feet up to the hands, flat back. Folds forward before coming all the way up. Baby back, bend at the top. Inhale, exhale, root to reach. Sweep those feet, flat back. Jump back to that high to low plank, upward to downward facing dog. Walk the feet towards each other so that they're right next to each other in the back of that mat. The feet are right in the center of the mat. I raise my left leg up. I pale it open. And I step my left foot between the hands for warrior two here. Arms parallel with the ground. Hooking forward over those front two knuckles. Sit down a bit deeper if you can. That front left heel is dissecting the center of that back right foot. That back right foot is almost lined up with the back side of my mat. Staying in this warrior two position, I want to come to an extended side angle. My left forearm comes to that left quad. My right arm reaches way up and then forward to really feel that stretch coming from that right hip. We're not leaning on this left forearm too much. So much so that I can take that left arm off that quad if I need to here. Keep the integrity of the legs. Reverse that warrior. My left hand comes way up towards the sky. My right hand slides down that back right leg. And I cartwheel my hands down. I push back to a downward facing dog. Make sure that the feet are right next to each other in the center of the back of that mat. This time I raise my right leg up. I pale it open. And I step my right foot between my hands to warrior two on this other side. Sink down deep into it. Arms are parallel with the ground. We stick that warrior position. That back foot is flat. That front knee is right over the ankle. 
extended side angle here. That left hand reaches way up and then forward. That right forearm is on the quad to start. But then we activate that bottom oblique by bringing that right arm up, holding a beach ball right over our head. Reverse that warrior, let that left hand slide down that back left leg. Cartwheel the hands down, push back to that downward facing dog. Bend the knees, jump the feet up to the hands, flat back. Fold forward, come all the way up, hands to heart center. 15 minutes of a flow and stretch, 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes of more of a vinyasa flow. We're going to finish with a nice, about 10 minute stretch. We're going to make our way. Back down onto our backs where we started this workout. We're going to hug our knees up to our chest once again and see how different the body feels right now. So to start off this stretching portion of the tail end of this workout, we're going to come through the same three positions that we did to start just to see how different the body feels. Let the knees come out a little bit wider here so like we have in the beginning when it was almost that happy baby position, but we don't need to grab the feet just yet. But just feel how much looser those hips feel, how much looser the groin, the hamstrings feel after that flow. Come back towards the center with both knees. Continue holding your left knee, let your right leg fall down to the mat and feel that hamstring of that knee that you are holding. Feel that right hip flexor of that straight leg that is down on the ground. By activating it, by pushing the back of that right knee into the ground, you will feel that right hip flexor, that right quad, get a little bit more of a stretch in there. Come into that spinal twist here by taking the right hand to the outside of that left knee, coming across the body. And already I can feel how much easier it was to get that hip down, get that knee down, as I peel up my left side here. I look towards that left hand and I find stillness. Static stretching is going to be our goal over the next eight to ten minutes. And in that static stretching, we want to hold positions for right around at least 45 seconds, preferably a minute or longer. We have this final twist on the left side. Let's come back through central. Bring that right knee up, let that left leg fall down straight to the ground. We hug this right knee up neutral here first, and we find that stillness. Now we take that left hand to the outside of that right knee, nice and easy. We come into that spinal twist on this side, healing that right pec, that right shoulder open, and we look towards that right open hand as that left hip closes down towards the ground. I mean, where? Come back through neutral here. We're going to roll up to a seated position. So we're going to get those hamstrings a little bit of a stretch, but also the back of the shoulders a little bit of a stretch here. So I'm going to have my knees generously bent, and I'm so much so that I'm able to get hold my my big toe and all my toes right up into my, the crease of my wrist here. And in doing that, I'm able to use my legs to almost inch down. And the more I inch down, I get a stretch to the shoulders right off the bat. But what I want to do is I want to inch forward until I start to feel that stretch, not just through my back and my shoulders, but in my hamstring. So the idea is to either get all the way down to a straight leg hamstring stretch. And if you can't do that while holding on to the bottoms of the feet like I am here, then you can let the hands come to the outside just like this. But it's a straight leg hamstring stretch that we want to get into and we want to stay into for about 45 seconds at least, but closer to a minute if you can. Because after that 45 second mark, we feel a little bit of a release where we're able to get a little bit more out of this stretch here. Really try to collapse the chest down towards the quads. Coming out of that nice and easy, you want to come down 
flat onto our back once again. And we're going to come into a figure four stretch now. So what I want to do is I'm going to bring my feet down flat just like this to stop. I'm going to cross my left ankle over my right knee. I'm going to take my left hand and I'm going to thread the needle between my legs to almost grab the back of this right hamstring. And then this right hand could go on the outside here to interlock the fingers behind that back right knee. Now the idea is this right leg is our tool to get a stretch to this left high hamstring, almost the glutes here as well. So we use this leg to almost come up. And more that we bring this right hamstring, this right knee towards our right shoulder, back, the more we'll feel that stretch in the left side. And again, we find comfort, we find stillness in our static stretching. We try to hold it for about 45 seconds to a minute. If it feels good for you to straighten out this top leg, you can try that. If it feels better for you to leave it bent, you can leave it bent. Try out what works for you. Find what works, stick with it. But that focus is on the breathing still. We come out of that nice and easy, and we want to get that same stretch on the other side. So to, to do that, I cross my right ankle over my left knee. I take my right hand, I thread the needle between my legs to grab the back of this left knee, and then the left hand interlocks, so that the fingers interlock right behind that left knee, and I allow my upper body to come flat down onto my mat, and I use that left knee to stay towards that left side hip. And the more that I do that, the more I'll feel that stretch to the right side of that back, loop that back hamstring. Coming out of that nice and easy, we're going to roll up, we're going to take ourselves over to a kneeling position, we can start in that tabletop position for this last couple of stretches of the day, in this first one I'm going to stay on my left knee, my right foot is going to come forward here, in the first part of this stretch all I want to do is I want to bring my hands towards this front knee, so my right foot is over towards the right side of my mat, my left knee is towards the left side of my mat, so I'm nice and neutral here. I step this right foot a little bit more forward, and the more I lean into this back left knee, the more I'll feel this stretch through this high hip here, this quad here as well. I want to bring both hands right to this top knee, and I want to have my upper body perpendicular to the ground. We find stillness here first. And then to get a little bit more out of this stretch, I'm on my left knee, I want to take my left arm, bring it straight up towards the ceiling, and then almost peel it open. That movement of coming across the body should give you a little bit more of a stretch through that left hip. And you hold that stretch here. Now before we come into that other side, I want to come down, bring my hands down to the ground. So they're on the inside of this right knee. I'm still on my left knee in the back here. And what I want to do is I want to take this front right foot and I want to come across the body here until I'm able to bring my chest down towards my quads and land down onto my forearms for a nice, good, weak hamstring stretch on this left side. The more you collapse that chest down onto that quad, the more you'll feel that stretch. And the static stretch is what we are looking for here, that just holding a position where you feel it. No pain at all, because if you're going to a point where you're feeling pain, you're less likely to stay in it for the amount of time that would be beneficial for you. Very carefully we come out of that. I travel up to my hands first usually, and then I use my hands, my upper body to come out. Now we want to get those same two stretches in 
on the other side. So now on my right knee, my left foot is allowed to step forward into almost a low lunge position, but that knee is flat on the ground and back. Both hands come to that left knee first. And we are almost pushing away from that knee, but I'm leaning into this right knee that is down flat onto the ground to get that hip flexor stretch on that right side. And again, we look to get that little bit more of a stretch by taking that right hand, we go straight up towards the ceiling first, and then we peel open. You fire up that body right from that right hip all the way through the right fingertips. And our last stretch here, I bring my hands down to support. I bring that left leg across the body so that I'm still on my right knee, and then I come down to my forearms. I let the chest collapse down onto the quads here, so we find that stillness in this last stretch of the day. Relaxing that chest down, let that crown of the head come down to the ground. If it can, if it can't, you can stack your fingers or stack your, your fists here to get comfortable through the upper body as well. The more comfortable you can be, while you are stretching, the better off you will be because, like I said, the more likely you'll be to stay in those positions for the time that is necessary to work, work for you. Coming out of that nice and easy, that is a 45-minute rise and shine yoga. Started slow, got a little bit of heat in there, and then we finished with that stretch. Hope you liked it. Share it with a friend. Have a hell of a day.